fashion. All right, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back to everyone to how I learned Arabic stories. Uh, now this one is a little bit of a, of a tricky one because we actually recorded this interview before and we are re-recording it for you guys. So inshallah, I need you guys to pay attention because the second time that you do something is always better. That's my, my school of thought. This is my opinion. Inshallah. I don't know inshallah, about yours. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, welcome back. I'm uh, with my brother Nuruddin Mohammed from the UK. Uh, so I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. You know, I'm, I'm gonna let you, you know, let people know who you are and what you do, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone. Uh, my full name is Muhammad Nuruddin Al-Khalawi, but people usually know me as Nuruddin. Um, I'm originally from the UK, from Cameroon, uh, Central African country. I'm uh, from a city called Douala. That's actually the economic capital of the country. Um, Alhamdulillah, I've been living in the UK for like uh, about nine, ten years now. I came in 2010, so yeah, about nine years. Alhamdulillah, that's just a bit about myself. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Okay. So, uh, so well, first of all, where where did you learn Arabic, and how long did it, did it take you to learn Arabic? Where did I learn Arabic? Uh, in Birmingham, there is um, there's a the place there's a place called the Moab Center, the Moab Center. Okay. Um, so, um, I don't know what ha what was happening at that time, but I think I was I was just looking for places to learn Arabic, mm -hmm. and uh, I was told, you know, there was a there was like a, a like an, an advertisement for Arabic classes there. So I just went there, and I registered with Alham. It took me about three years to complete the three Medina books, okay. um, book one, book oh, yeah. three. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, okay, so. Before learning the Arabic language, right? Before, before learning the Arabic language, but after you decided that you wanted to learn the Arabic language, okay. what kept you up at night? Like eyes open, staring at the ceiling. Um, so, like I said, um, being a, a young person coming from a, an African continent where 10 years ago, the internet was not very easily accessible. Uh, you had to go to like uh, cafes, you know, to surf on the internet and mm -hmm. go on social media mm -hmm. and things like this. And social media was not even what it is, it is today. So at that time, because we didn't have internet back back then, moving to a European country where you have internet, you know, at home, you have your router, and uh, you can just go on the internet on the internet as you want. Mm -hmm. So I would mm -hmm. just be on social media. You know, Facebook was like very very big at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Watching videos on YouTube and just surfing on the internet and you know. Being a young person, you just waste time on that. Yeah. So that was what yeah. was, you know, kept me at night. Just talking to friends, for example, back home, friends that I had, uh, chatting to them, talking to them, and just surfing the internet, you know? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay, so, so, uh, so what was you afraid of, like, once you decided to, you know, that you want to learn Arabic, and you found uh, Mu'ad Center and, and these Arabic classes that were about to start or whatever? What was you afraid of, like starting out? Starting to learn the Arabic language, I think, um, is a common thing to any or to any person who wants to learn a foreign language to themselves. So, for example, being uh, you know making mistakes mm -hmm. while you're speaking, you know, and being uh, being being scared to be laughed at. So mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest fear that many people will have uh, about learning the foreign language, and also. Um, for example, French, because I'm, I'm, I'm a, I speak French as well and English, mm -hmm. to learn a language that is similar to French, for example, Spanish or Italian, that's much more easier than learning yeah. you know, yeah. from, 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 from French to Arabic. Or maybe mm -hmm. if you're an English person or, a, or an English speaking person, to learn a language like, um, let's say, Germany or German, um, that's a bit closer to English. So that there's this connection. But for, for you to move from a complete way, Mm -hmm. Even the letters are not yeah. the same. The pronunciation, the words that don't even exist in French no. and, Eng and, and no. English, you, to make that, you know, that move is a bit, you know, is a bit tricky and you're a bit, you know, no. uh, anxious about no. it. So my no. biggest fear was making that move and also being scared to be laughed at or to make these no. mistakes no. when you're wrong in the language. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Uh, <laughs> it, it comes to my mind like scenes of uh, of times where. 
where uh, I remember once my teacher he said um, was the ayah waladaru al akhirat hi al hayawan naam so <laughs> okay. my teacher asked me ask us okay who knows what al hayawan means in this ayah so okay. he asked me and I'm super confident I'm like hayawan yani yani fi fi al janna ma fi hayawan and he's like <laughs> and then the whole class started laughing at me so uh so for those who yeah. who, who don't understand the joke is because uh you know hayawan is a is a word to to that that basically means life like the eternal life kind of thing so yeah. uh and hayawan at the same time it means animal yeah, but animals, uh yeah. but uh right now i can't think of is actually written the same is actually the, the same yeah uh, i think it's hayawan yeah you write yeah, the same but you yeah. know if you put it in a context or another it means something or it means something else and yeah. the teacher asked yeah who knows what this is and i was like all confident animals animals yeah it has to do something yeah. with animals in jannah or something yeah so okay so what were um you angry about not knowing arabic you know what were you angry about and actually respond to this question by telling me the the three daily frustrations that you had the three daily frustration that i had not knowing arabic uh firstly it will be you know um as i said if when 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 you start practicing islam for example mm-hmm. and uh, you start getting close to the deen you want to learn more you want to understand more of the quran so the first thing was about and not being able to understand the text of Islam by mm-hmm. yourself so the Quran and Sunnah so being on be, you know being you you you've been very amazed when people are crying tarawih for example or people are crying uh, in in classes or maybe in the mm-hmm. khutbah because mm-hmm. they speaking in arabic and you don't understand it or someone understands a joke you know or understands a, a, an expression which you don't <laughs> and you're baffled like what's going on i didn't, yeah. I didn't get that So being able you know not not being able to understand the source of Islam the Quran and Sunnah that was one of them you know that you wanted to understand it for yourself mm-hmm. okay the second thing i would say not being able to understand the scholars mm-hmm. okay the scholars of Islam where they giving classes in Arabic and there's so much knowledge out there which you don't have the key to because Arabic is actually the key to to to, to the scholars and uh, mm-hmm. to understanding um, and and uh, uh, you know being a student of knowledge and excelling no. in that so the this, that was the second thing um and the third thing would be just perhaps day to day um conversations and dialogue with people that learn that that new arabic you know no. uh for example as well uh going maybe in holidays when mm. you go to umrah or, or 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 hajj and you get you get ripped off you know <laughs> or, or maybe maybe when you go to morocco or egypt and the guys just they just throw prices at you and <laughs> they might be speaking you know him speaking to you his colleague about increasing the price but you don't know what ziyada means or nox mean and yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. know what he's talking about so or maybe you have a guide a mm-hmm. guide who is like you know in 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 business with the with the merchant he's mm-hmm. telling him okay increase the price so i get some of it so if you clock that like oh yeah guys he's trying to rip me off yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but if if you can't understand the language then you get ripped off very badly yeah. so those were three reasons i would say mm-hmm. and and those, those were three reasons sometimes as well they they test you like knowing arabic or not knowing arabic it could mean a big difference in what yeah, you should pay could, uh, for something yeah, yeah a big difference a big difference you know because there, sometimes they'd be like for example in egypt they they might just just come next to you and be like uh assalamu alaykum bikhair and just expect to see what you're going to say Like do you yeah, understand do you not understand and when you be like ana bi khair kif halak bi khair anta ha ma sha he be like oh yeah that's a shit man i can't, can't rip him off <laughs> yeah us so that's crazy man okay would you say that you was angry uh at someone not knowing arabic now oh, ev- 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 everything i mentioned was was i think pertain to myself you know mm-hmm. that that th- those were my own short comments So mm-hmm. being angry at someone else I wouldn't really say that because um in Africa or where I come from we don't really have this zeal and this passion for learning Arabic for example so mm-hmm. people don't really know that so I can't really blame you know other people for it I, I blame I, I, I can only blame myself no. for not you know learning it you know um uh, sooner no definitely 
So, uh, so from learning Arabic, what was this, like secretly, what was this, this, the thing that you desired the most out of, you know, the fact of you wanting to learn Arabic? What well, secret is that the most? I'm um, again connected to, I would say, the scholars, mm -hmm. because in in the UK we have, alhamdulillah, we have conferences going on. Um, the scholars, some you know, from uh, Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, they come sometimes for conferences and they give classes. So uh, one of the thing or this one one of the thing that I really wanted to do is being able to ask them my questions by myself, mm -hmm. you know, or quote unquote being in the class and the sheikh, you know, he just says something in Arabic and you're like, ah, yeah, I know it. You know, yeah. and Allah Mustaan, people can see you. They're like, oh, yes, yeah, Allah, who's, this young, who's that young brother? He knows Arabic, how, you know, and then yeah, people yeah, start yeah. talking to you at the end of class, like, what did you learn? How long did it take you? And they're like, mm -hmm. amazed, you see, black brother came to the UK and he learned Arabic. What, how is that? So yeah. people would, yeah. people would sometimes assume that I knew Arabic from back home, you know, no. places like no. Senegal, for example, or, or Mali, where mm. there's like that ilm. So mm -hmm. they apply that same rule to other countries. When Cameroon is mainly, Christian, a Christian country. So there's only 25% yeah. of Islam. So we don't have that connection to Ilm. So yeah. when you tell them, no, I learned it here in the UK. Uh, I did three years, alhamdulillah, I can speak. They're like, oh, subhanAllah, mashallah. So that that was that was the the, the you know, secret kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And you know, as I said, being able to ask your questions to the scholars, even if you have personal questions, you know, questions that you don't want someone else to translate for you, you can just grab him and ask him a question, you know? That, yeah. that was a... Yeah. That, was, that was a yeah. It's funny that you mentioned that because uh, it's true. It's, it's true that a lot of a lot of um, like just in general in the West, uh, you know, brothers or sisters with uh, with African backgrounds, they are perceived like their success is perceived as like oh, like oh, he's he's African. That's normal. Yeah, he's you know African. I mean? That's no problem. You know. Not knowing that sometimes you put the work in yourself, and there's some countries in Africa that are not all like that. Yeah. North Africa, West Africa, yeah, you have elm there. Mm. Maybe um, uh, East Africa as well, you know, Somalia and these kind of places. Yeah, you have elm there. But when you go to well, Sub-Saharan Africa, <laughs> to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, that's a bit more. That's a bit more hard. Cameroon and uh, when you're going down Congo and these places, Gabon, for example, yeah. there's less elm there and there's more Kufar and more non-Muslims. Yeah. yeah, it's funny because uh, just just before you, I was interviewing a, a sister, and the sister is uh, is like from the United States, but uh, but her parents are are Nigerian, right? And she memorized okay. Quran. So uh, so after the interview, I, I was talking to someone. I, I told I told told the person about about the sister, and she memorized Quran, and. And they directly asked me, oh, where is she, where is she from? I said, the United States. She was no, but she's she African, right? I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, if, if she has something like that, she got to be African kind of thing. Yeah, alas. <laughs> you know, the you know I mean? Quran in the West, that's, oh, man. Yeah. Okay, for, so for you, what was the, the turning point that made you say, uh, okay, I need to learn Arabic now? The turning point. Um, you know, be, being a young brother who was trying to practice the deen, uh, and you have to understand my journey of the Arabic language is always connected to the deen, practicing the deen and the ilm and the scholars, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it has that mm -hmm. connection. Yeah. I don't think if, if if I didn't start practice Islam or practicing Islam in a more serious way, I don't think I would have learned Arabic. So the turning point for me was when, as I wanted to start to, to I wanted to apply to the Islamic University of Medina. Mm -hmm. So and uh, and as you know in Medina, at the at the university, they have a two-year program, but then mm -hmm. you you want to be smarter basically, you know, not get there and not waste time or yeah. not take too long in the in the language program, or even if you do go to language pro, 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 um, program, you will be the best of your class because you, yeah. you have some basics, and mm -hmm. you can always focus on uh, the classes in the masjid, sitting the scholars memorizing Quran, Moses and Mutun, for example. So you have that advantage have the advantage you know mm -hmm. compared to a person who just went to the jamia and started arabic there as, as, and started learning arabic there you have that, that advantage you know that you can you can just grab that yeah. so that was the turning yeah. point for me when i was like okay i need to apply for the jamia and to go and study and uh i'm going to do this but i need the advantage and as you know the scholars they say you cannot 
you have to benefit from what is on the ground. You know, mm -hmm. you have to, even the sort of hadith, for example, they will narrate and take hadith from the people that were in their cities before mm -hmm. moving out to other scholars of other, other countries and, and cities. So I had to, like, get serious about it right now. And also, when you go to classes, you always said, guys, you know, like I was said, Abu Sama Dhabi always says to us, guys, Arabic, Arabic, Arabic. The Arabic mm -hmm. is the key. Arabic is the key. Learn Arabic. Enroll to an Arabic class and Quran class. These are the two things that he often advises, you know, us no. with. So, no. alhamdulillah, you know, we, we took that on board and um, that was like, okay, I need to do this. And uh, hopefully, you know, I have that advantage, you know, above many people that go to the Jamia, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it was a little bit like gradually kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so, um, so, what was the method you use again? Uh, we did, we did the the well-known Medina books. So you have to know, you know, the Medina books um, uh, at the university are different from what we have here. Here we just have the book called um, Durus al Lughat al Arabiya la Ghair al Yeah. So, so that that's that's just one part of the actual curriculum that they go to in Medina. So. Uh, we just call them here the Benita books. Um, so there's the book one, the book two, and the book three. So that's that's what I went through. We took about, yeah, two years, years and a half to complete all those books. Mm -hmm. so that was the method. Now, um, in the actual classes, now in the actual classes, uh, the Sheikh will, for example, uh, in, the, in, in book one, there's a lot of vocab. There's a lot mm -hmm. of vocabulary. So um, being tested about what is the name of this, what is the name of that in Arabic, chair, bed, pen, bag, and so on and so forth. And also, you, you would have like small texts as well to mm -hmm. analyze them, to extract all the vocabularies from them. And then you have some ground rules, you know, hada, dhalika, you know, mm -hmm. and half jar, and on these things in the, um, in the text as well. So, yeah, that, that was basically what we do. Now, in the second book, there's even more of that. There's, mm -hmm. there's more vocab, there's more grammar. And the third book, that's where, you know, you, you basically, you, the Arabic is very strong. Where you're like, yeah. where you're going through, you know, verb forms, and uh, you start, you know, analyzing essays and answering questions about the essay, about, mm. about, about the text. I mean, and yeah, that, that was basically what. Mm -hmm. what um, so, would you say that uh, uh, learning the Arabic language is important? The type of teacher that you that you have or is it more important the book that you're learning i i, th I think is it, it has to be a combination of both mm -hmm. and it has to be you have to, you have to check why are you learning the arabic language so just to touch upon that for example ma ma mainly in the west from my, you know from my knowledge people either, either do the benina books or they do al arabia mm -hmm. okay so with the benina books the Medina books are more focused to a person who's trying to learn Arabic, uh, to learn knowledge or to seek alim. Yeah. That's what the Medina books are for, generally. Mm -hmm. Now, Arabia Bay, there's more uh, conversation. So that's more for mm -hmm. a person who's learning Arabic as a as a language, you know, wanting to talk with people. But mm -hmm. that's not the thing to the Medina book. So when you have that purpose, if you learn Arabic because of alim, because you want to study Islam, then I think the Medina book will be very good. If you mm -hmm. learn Arabic because you want to conversate, or go to go you know holidays and just get a little you know quick Arabic kind of thing. Yeah. Learn the Arabic main deck. So I didn't learn Arabic main deck, but I don't know I, I don't know if they have like rules and things this kind of thing in those books. But I was told that you know it's more for people who uh, learn Arabic as a language rather than learn Arabic for the deen and you know no. that kind of thing. So that that's that's for the book and that, that's concerning the purpose that you have why you learn Arabic. Secondly. You have to have a good teacher, you know. You have to, you have to get, and this, this is what we know from the from from the scholars of the past and the present that no. you must have a good teacher, you know, uh, because as you know, the teacher is going to affect you and affect mm -hmm. your progress, you know. Uh, for for me, for example, alhamdulillah, I had a very very good teacher. I, I can't not even complain. Alhamdulillah, the my my, my, my teacher and him he, as a person, he was different as well. So he's a revert mm -hmm. from Brazil who went to the Islamic University. <laughs> so a, a river Brazilian man who went to the Jamia and actually studied with the author of the Benina books. No. So the you have the whole Senate course. Yeah, yeah, Sheikh Abdurrahman. He studied with him. You know. Mm -hmm. So 
and Shah Abdul Rahman is the one who actually made the Arabic program. Like he, he he's the one who who set up the Arabic program for the new students. So mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah, I have that very nice isnad, you know, no. uh, between me and the teacher and the the one who made the Bunyib Wallahi So I think and and his method was very nice, very nice. Wallahi Alham it was mm -hmm. it was uh, a. You know, I'm I'm very very thankful to the person. And Alhamdulillah, we're still in contact. Sometimes we speak, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so I would say it's, it's a combination of the the book, the teacher, and also your own efforts. Okay. Yeah, own efforts. So the book can be nice, the book can be excellent, the teacher can be the best teacher you can ever have. But if you don't put your own work into it, and you can't really rip off, you know, much yeah. of the fruits. Definitely. So so what was your feelings like? Uh, you know, why learning Arabic from from the first book to the second to the third? What was the feelings like? Um, satisfaction, I would say. Satisfaction. Where, mm -hmm. where you know, you come to the point where, alhamdulillah, you don't need the subtitles anymore. You know, you can grab many of the what 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 is said in the in the in the in the books. You can open the book and, and you know get a grasp of it. You open mm -hmm. the Quran and you're reading. Okay. You know, so satisfaction. Know, that's in at the end, right? Say it again. So the, the the feeling of satisfaction is at the end, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's at the, the end. I think it's, it's, it's throughout your learning. It's, through, mm -hmm. it's in your process. So the more you learn, the more you find that, yeah, you're improving. The more you, you mm -hmm. open the Quran and you can, you can read it and you can understand some of it. You can open books of hadith, for example, and read it. You can go on YouTube and, you know, kind of uh, you can pick on some words and some sentences some yeah. benefits from the scholars yeah. you know here and there so the more you do it the more you practice the more you listen to it then you, you, you just you just get you know carried yeah, away. yeah 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 definitely yeah, so I would, that's, that's how i see the feeling of is satisfaction you know? mm -hmm. okay so how many aha moments do you guys have through the you have throughout the process and i think i have been asking this to uk brothers and and it seems like they don't understand the you know the, the the saying but i think it's an american saying when they say a aha moment is like when you when you come across something you'll be like aha like so this is this or this is that you know what i mean um aha moment okay aha moment mm. right now the only thing i can think of is um in the forms, so the, the so the verb form, for example, so mm -hmm. in, in the in the book, the majority of the Arabic language um, books, you know, the 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 Medina books, at the end of the third book, that's where you start learning about verb forms, you know. Mm -hmm. So maha moment was more like a like so like you know when you discover how verbs of the how words are derived from root words. Mm -hmm. So you're like, oh, so you say you say for example. Um, um, Laib or Laiba, no. like to play, and you say maybe Malab, you're like, no. oh, subhanallah, that's where it comes from, you know, yeah, yeah. or maybe uh, um, Zahaba, Malhab, no. Dihab, you know, these, these connections that yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that every single word in Arabic language goes back to a root word where you extract mm -hmm. it from and you make other, you know, things. So, for example, in the Arabic language, I think there's, there's this rule of every, like, if, if, if you have a verb, uh, to make a place out of it, for example, sajada, okay? Mm -hmm. Sajada, you know, to, the verb to make sujud, for example. Now you have masjid. No. In, in, you have a meme. So that, that meme basically, uh, you know, denotes a place. Yeah. So many, many words that have meme in front of them, they're for places. Malab, masjid, mustashfa. No. Uh, Matar, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Mustawsaf, and other places like this. So, so when when you start grabbing these rules about, oh, Subhanallah, when it's this meme, it, it could be a place. Yeah. So this, this 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 was like maha moment, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I know what you mean now. And and even even the, even even the other round where you you're taught the word. And you basically track it backwards to the root word of it. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you know. So and now you understand the well. meaning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So these connections are well between the words. That, that's what makes the Arabic, Arabic language rich and beautiful. That's, mm -hmm. that's for me personally. This is why, uh, this is why experts they say that the Arabic language is so easy to learn because every time you learn a word, 
on average, you know the meaning of 60 more words. So, for example, if you learn the meaning of la'iba, you yeah. now pretty much understand lu'ba, mal'ab, tala'ub, you yeah. know, and all of these words that come from, from the root. So, this is why, subhanAllah, this was one of my aha moments as well. Like, once I, I, I understood this, that you have, and this was when our teachers started to teach us how to look for, how to use the Arabic to Arabic dictionary, you know, yeah. and to look for the roots of the words and everything. So once I found out this, I was like, okay, so everything is about memorizing root words, basically. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the verbs uh, with three, with three, three letters, basically. Three letters, yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was, that was, that was that's amazing. Like every time, like me teaching the Arabic language, I'll be like, subhanAllah, this is crazy. Every time I record a lesson or something, I'll be like, subhanAllah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so, aha uh -huh moments. All right, so what was the main books that you, the books that you, uh, that you had on a daily basis? The you know, books that you were, always uh, had with you? Or the, the books that, that always served you to, throughout your, your learning of the Arabic language? Honestly, honestly, I would say, you know, even though Allah blessed me with uh, learning the Arabic, you know, like that, I would say I was, I was a very, very lazy learner. Very, mm -hmm. very lazy learner. So the teacher would always say things like, get your vocab on point, memorize the vocab, but I would never do it. I would never really um, memorize the words like that. And that, that's why mm -hmm. even today, I'm, as, as this, I'm, I'm still very weak in the in my vocab you know no. uh, i don't you know not, not learning a lot of words because at the end of the day learning the language is all about learning the words mm -hmm. Wait, the more words you have the more you can swap them around the more you can use them mm -hmm. so i didn't really have a book that I, I, I would just study the book that you know we had in the in the, in the classes and that was it that, that was mm -hmm. all I, I would do you know extra work and this kind of thing i was like ah, no, i don't want extra work i don't want to do it and that was enough for me with learn you know for yeah. the people they have to like put the work in. They have to like you know revise all the time, do the homework, do this, do that. But alhamdulillah, I, I was at the top of my class with Lel Ham without even making that much effort, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't really have a book like that. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna do like like Mufti said to you. I'm I'm gonna fry you. I'm gonna fry you right now because when you were saying when you were saying uh, you know like me, what I've learned is Arabic bin Adik. You know what I mean? Okay. So when you were saying like, you know, I have been told that Arabic and is more like for people who, you know, who just looking for a conversation. Okay. okay. But in reality, in reality, Arabic and why do I think it's the best method of learning a language is because you actually learning the language. And I think with, uh, you know, with my little experience that I have seen different programs and my wife having um, uh, graduated one of, well, not one, the first American Western graduating from Alibana Institute, which is the known institute in, uh, in Egypt. Yeah. I've seen that, you know, it's so nice, so known and everything. But sometimes the, the most simple things are the things that work the best. You know what I mean? So al Arabia bin Adik is good. And I think uh, it, 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 it serves uh, the purpose of learning the Arabic language because you actually learn the Arabic language. You know, the lessons are yeah. like are like, you know, by subjects, for example, a second and uh, al -usra okay. wa al you know, okay. mashrab wa yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff like that. Parts, yeah. yeah, so you actually learn the language, you know what I'm saying? And for me, from the experience that I have, as you know, I, uh, you know, I speak French myself, uh, but it's a learned language, like I have actually learned, yeah. and English as well, it's, it's a learned language as well. And even a few days ago, I was talking to my wife and... Um, and I hear my children, obviously my children take the, the, the knowledge from, from my wife. My wife, she's, uh, she's English speaking native, but myself yeah. is, is learned. So there's yeah. many words that my children say that I don't even know. You know what I mean? But that doesn't <laughs> remove the fact that I am fluent in Arabic. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, I see. So, uh, I see. so why is that? It's because I actually learned the language by, by, daily vocabulary yeah, kind of thing yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so this is why i think that when brothers go ahead and, and learn books like because there is many marakis in for example al ibana or al furqan one and books like al madina and stuff like this they have this methodology of learning the language for 
for the deen, but in reality it's no learning the language on a deen context. Because you, yeah. cannot, you cannot learn a language and start learn, learning like, you know, like what, uh, you know, words in, in fiqh, for example, and words in, yeah. uh, in, in, the, in the kutub of uh, Sheikh al-Islam Taymiyyah and stuff like this. You don't learn yeah, the language yeah, yeah. like that, you know what I'm saying? So I yeah. just wanted to fry you there and uh and refute your you know, to, to be honest to be honest I, I can yeah I, I understand that but you have to remember the the arabic the arabic books of medina are different here you know the ones that we have here, and i don't know if i said it before but the ones that we have here is just one part of the actual arabic program you see okay. so i think i think maybe okay the the arabic it combines all of them but mm-hmm. the thing is the books that we have is only about is is, is only the 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 grammar part the mm-hmm. common part. Then you have Hiwar, and you have uh, Kitaba, and uh, Tahaddud, and these kind of things, in, and other parts of the Arabic language, um, of the book, but that's in Medina, though. Mm-hmm. In, in the UK, we, we don't really have that. We only have okay. the parts about the grammar. You know? So, okay. that, those parts are missing, you know. If we had that, Medina would be much better than Arabia. They are, they are nah, I don't believe that as well, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a refuter right now with factual facts. Because in <laughs> Egypt, we had brothers from Medina University coming in summertime to better their, uh, their, uh, their Arabic. Coming but from with, Medina with University. You're no. coming to learn Benedict. No. No. Oh. <laughs> and, they were, and they were super surprised about like, the level of like one year in Arabic. And you will see the, the interview with, uh, with the sister that I did before she studied six months Arabia Benedict. And we were conversing, I said, I'm like, well, uh, you know what I mean? So uh, uh, I think, and I will, I will, you know, stick to my opinion that, uh, <laughs> that Arabia Benedict is, is way better. And another no, fact as well is that in Egypt, they are just known for knowing how to teach the al غير الناطقين بالعربية. Yeah. No. Yeah, and just in general, like, you know, even Al Azhar, you know? In Al Azhar, in Al Azhar, when I was in Kulia Sharia, in Al Azhar, I went to for to do Umrah, and I was, uh, um, you know, I was invited by one of the brothers uh, uh, of uh, of Medina University to to sleep in his in his uh, room and stuff, and, uh, and he was showing me his uh, what were he was on his third year of of Kulia Al Hadith, and he okay. showed me what were they doing. And uh, and I was on my first on my first year of kulia to Sharia, not even tachasus fil hadith. And the things yeah. that I was doing on my first year is the same thing he was doing on his third year his of third year. Uh, of kulia to hadith. Hey, man. <laughs> so uh, see, you know, shout out to uh, to Egypt and uh, and the teachers in Egypt and their methods. Okay, so uh, so yeah, so. Okay, so right now, what I, it, this is a new thing that I have been doing with, uh, with, this, uh, with these interviews that I started with, uh, with, the six, with the sister, actually. For those who are watching right now, if you didn't see that interview, go back and, and see it. But uh, I would like for people to rate in the comments from 1 to 10, you know, our level of conversation in Arabic. So the next question that okay. I'm going to ask you is going to be in Arabic. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so uh, inshallah, uh, su'al sahl, sahl al jawab. Wa ana adunno anakum fi, yani fi fi merkaz muath hada. Ma darastum illa fi, yani fi fasl jamai. Walakin al su'al huwa hal tufadil al durus khassa aw al durus fi jamaa. والله أخي يعني حقيقة سألني أم أم عدل أم سألني أحد الإخوة هذه نعم. السؤال وقلت له أنا أفضل يعني أم أد أد الدراسة بال بالجماعة نعم. عرفت لأن لأن يعني أن أن تكون مع المدرس فقط هذا ما تعلمت هكذا يعني هذا ليس طريقنا عرفت نعم. أظن أن الأفضل أن تكون مع الجماعة وتحدث معهم ومع نعم. المدرس يعني وتناقش بين you know بين بينك وبينهم ف no. افضل هذا يعني الجماعه no. وانا اعرف ان يعني في مصر بعض الناس او بعض الغربيين يفضلون يعني الاحد يو you know, mm-hmm. انت مع المدرس فقط فانا لا احب هذا يعني no. افضل no. يعني بالجماعه وال ولا ال- 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 الطلاب معك no. هذا هذا الطريق يعني 
الحمد لله طيب so now let me ask you rate your Arabic conversational skills from one to ten without being humble for me yeah myself Without being humble, I, I would say <laughs> an eight. Tricky seven question, eight. right? Everyone says yeah. eight, subhanAllah. <laughs> yeah, I would say yeah, seven and eight, yeah. No. And, 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 and like I said, my vocab is, is still very weak. You know, my mm-hmm. vocab is not really there. Yeah. You know, and as you said, that, that's, the, that's the thing we've learned in the, the Medina books. Because mm-hmm. in Arabia, being there, and I'm going to agree with that, although, you know, I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of vocab. You learn how to, like, you know, have the hiwar. And no. this kind of thing. So that, that's one of the strong things that Ben Indig has, um, which I didn't learn, you know, that that way. But alhamdulillah, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, I think my conversation, my my, my conversation in Arabic, it just came from just listening to the Arabic language and just, no. you know, um, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, just listening to scholars and catching up words from the Quran, for example, you know, no. and uh, and, uh, and this kind of thing. So the more you 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 read Arabic, you listen to Arabic, there's some words that you're gonna catch up. Anyway, mm-hmm. so I, w- I will give you a seven or eight. You know, as I said, no. alhamdulillah, it's very easy for me to go to the scholar and ask him a question and ask him, uh, you know, mess around this, this kind no. of things and to understand what he says. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty easy to go to Shamsi and say, yeah, Shamsi, Taala Sallim Ala Ala Love is that. Taiba. So, what do you think? Uh, it was the hardest thing, of, you know, the hardest part of learning Arabic. Hardest part of learning Arabic. Um, I, I would say you know it it, it it would depend it would depend because the, learning the Arabic language has different um, uh, different sections to it. If I may say, there's the mm-hmm. speaking part, the writing part, the reading part, and then there's a conversation as well. Right. So speaking, you know. So that that's um, uh, the hardest part. I think it would be. Learning the grammar, okay. Mm-hmm. Learning the grammar of the Arabic, you know, how to uh, when when does when 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 is the word majroor and maksoor and uh, no. you know, marfu no. and this kind of thing. So basically, Arab, basically no. Arab. So I, I would say Arab is like the chunk of it. Now we we're, <laughs> we're, not, we're not even getting into balagha and uh, this kind of thing. That's <laughs> something else. I, I'm talking about basic Arab. So, no. And this, I think this is how we, we learn the Arabic in the West. P- people don't usually go into Balagha and uh, Shi'ar and this kind of thing. No. Because it's just another level. Yeah. So I think the, the, the hardest part for me was the Arab. No, no, no. The Arab. That's like the math of, think, of the Arabic language. Yeah, such a, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but, and, and even then, even then it comes with Riyadh. It's come, it, it comes with uh, practicing again and again mm-hmm. and again. You just get a grab of it. No. Yeah, Arab was definitely... Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, how of an impact has had learning the Arabic language now that you have it, and uh, and how is your life different? Again, all, all connected to all connected to you being able to understand the Quran even better, mm-hmm. understand the Hadith even better. Going back to the source, the actual sources, no translation, independency. You know, you being your own man, you don't have to, you know, constantly attend English classes. For example, you can no. always go back to the class itself. Check mm-hmm. what they said, you know, without no translation. Not that translations are bad. Some people need mm-hmm. translation. Some people are always going to need translation, you know, but you just have to be independent. You just have mm-hmm. to, like, okay, I want to know what, what what does Allah say here? Why is He saying this? What was before it? The hadith, what does it mean by that? What the Prophet said here? What the scholars said by themselves? What, what, what are the, you know, the explanations they gave to this text? Mm-hmm. And you can always do up yourself. So I, I think the major thing that the major impact was being independent just being independent and mm-hmm. not relying on uh, other people for my own you know journey about you know no. learning yeah that's something that uh that is a, a, a true blessing because for people for example who i don't know they might have old parents they, they might not be able to travel or whatever it that's might be they can just you know go into as we were talking before you know, Durus, they have Durus live from Al Medina or even big yeah, playlist exactly. of, I don't know, Sharhu Sunnah Lil, uh, lil uh, Sheikh Ibn Thaymin, for example. And you just go you through it always, and, yeah. so, you know, study at home. As, 
is is the key. As long as you have the key, you have that that miftah, that's it, done. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. you can you, you can start your own studies. You can you can move on your own pace. You know. Definitely. You don't have to rely on uh, you know. Yeah. That's that's basically man. Tayyip, so what would be your last advice for you know the person that knows and acknowledges the importance of learning the Arabic language, and he wants to learn it basically, but you know, like we said, there's always a time frame in between you knowing and acknowledging the importance of learning until you actually decide to, to find something yeah. actively yeah. to start learning. So for the person who is in, 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 that, in that particular situation, what would you advise them? Um, so the first thing I'm going to say is you have to recognize the importance of the Arabic language because if, if you don't know the importance of something, you cannot go into it. Mm-hmm. You know, and you have to remember the statements of the Sahaba and the scholars of the past. For example, Omar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu anhu, he, what, what did he say? He said, Ta'allam al-Arabiya fa inna min deenikum. Learn Arabic no. because it's from your deen. You know, it's mm-hmm. intertwined with your deen. You know, the revelation came into Arabic. Um, he's also said that the, the language the language of the people of, of Jannah is going to be Arabic. So no. when when you listen to these things, the Prophet he was given the Jawab and Kalim. He was he was very eloquent in the Arabic language. So when you know about the importance of the Arabic language, that that is going to help you. And for example, um, uh, I heard this thing about uh, the Imam Malik at the, at the time of Imam Malik. They will refuse and you know be very very hard on a person who spoke. A different language in the masjid mm-hmm. than Arabic. Mm-hmm. They had to speak Arabic in the masjid, so they were scared that someone else come outside and speak Persian or Roman, the, you know, the Roman yeah. language in mm-hmm. the masjid. You know, because of this, that's the sacredness of the masjid. They were only allowed Arabic in the masjid, mm-hmm. and I think that that could be an opinion of, of, of one of the you know the the, the Maliki school or something like that. Allah alam that mm-hmm. in a masjid you know you only speak Arabic. Check this for example. Some people could say the khutbah can only be in Arabic. So that, no. that again shows you that the Arabic language does That's have an effect. That's in the Malik effect, yeah. It, it has a dramatic effect. You know, for, for the scholars of fiqh to say the khutbah, the khutbah which is the main gathering of the Muslim, you know, in the week, that it can only be in Arabic, you have to understand from it that the Arabic language is is, is up there. You no, know, so no, that, no, that, no. that says recognize the importance that the Arabic language has. That the, the Arab language, you know, in the deen. And even if it was a non-Muslim, for example, uh, I think it's the same thing. So this for this for a Muslim, a non-Muslim learning the Arab language again, he opened doors for you. you. You all know right now in the in in the world, you know, the Arab countries. There's dough there, there's money there. So yeah. for you to have yeah. this this kind of contact there as well, the Arabic language. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. as as the people of the past, you know, non non-Muslims of the past, for them to have the keys um, to enter the Arab lands and learn mathematics and physics and these sciences, they had to learn the Arabic language because everything was in Arabic. Mm-hmm. So Muslims and non-Muslims, practicing and non-practicing, you have to understand that the Arabic language is just something that is rich. It's yeah. rich and yeah. other languages are much more poor. You mm-hmm. know, the, 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 you know, the Arabic language is then. Mm-hmm. As for the other they language, no yeah. doubt about it. Recognize the importance of the language, first of all. Uh, second thing is, I would say get a good teacher, you know. And this mm-hmm. is what our our sensei, Mufti Muhammad Munin, he always tells. You know, he always mm-hmm. says it: get a good teacher. You have to get, a, you have to have a good teacher. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone that's you know mentor you and check your process. That's going to be dedicated. Not not even dedicated, but they, you know they will give you time mm-hmm. and they will encourage you to study. So and they have to be qualified, not just any teacher, a qualified teacher. You know, mm-hmm. someone who learns the Arabic language themselves. You know, mm-hmm. and they will the process. They can tell you the mistake they did, so you don't do them as well. You know, no. uh, so getting a good teacher and for yourself, just do it. Mm-hmm. Just start doing it. Start doing it. No. And uh, just go for it. You're always gonna make mistakes. You make it. You you are going to be laughed at. You're going to make very very ugly mistakes in the language. <laughs> but what can you do? You learn the language. You know. Yeah. Um, another thing I would say is uh, learn Arabic language just as. A child learn the, learn, learns learns Arabic, you know. It's, no. uh, I'm talking about an Arabic speaking child. The way they learn Arabic, mm-hmm. and how, how do they do it? They, they learn poems, you know. And as I told you last, um, uh, the, you know, last time I, I said, look at this. If you go on YouTube, there's this very nice song. You know, when when I saw it, I was like, I was amazed. It was nice, you yeah. know. Uh, but the letters, are, you know, um, Alifun Aranak Yajiri Yelab Yakun Jazar Kaya Yatab, so on and so forth. So, 
th these are the songs that little tr ch children we you know listen to to know the, the the words and a word a word that starts with alif or ba no. or ta. So they will listen to these things too. When when we're not talking about listening to I don't know mad music in Arabic or rap in <laughs> Arabic. That's what we're talking about. You know, simple rhymes if you want. Mm -hmm. You know, rhymes about the Arabic language and just go step by step. You can't don't just jump into Ajrumiya and mm -hmm. big books of, of the language. You have to you have to recognize that in the Arabic language you're a baby. Yeah. You're you you're a little child. In the mm -hmm. Arabic language, you, you might be a grown man, a grown woman with a beard and whatever, but in the learn this language, the Arabic <laughs> yeah. or any other language, you're a child. Yeah. And this is where this is how a child learns the Arabic language, you know, mm -hmm. or any other language. Rhymes, little songs, you know, uh, uh, um, watching cartoons if you want. No. It's very beneficial. Watching cartoons or watching the news, for example, and mm -hmm. just picking up on these small words and practicing yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. As I say, practice makes perfect, man. You can't learn the Arabic language and you never speak Arabic. You never try to speak it. You know, yeah. you're always scared. You have to practice it day to day, you know? Yeah. This word, yeah. just repeating them, so on and so forth. So, those, those would be my main my main advice for a person. And also get a good dictionary, you know? Very mm -hmm. nice. You have to have a good dictionary. Mm -hmm. And I personally would advise anyone to get the Hansvia. Mm -hmm. Hansvia dictionary of show modern us, Arabic. Show us the, the dictionary real quick if you have it around. Let me check. Let me take it. This is definitely my 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 my. This is the this is the dictionary. That's the, I call it the dictionary, not just a this the. <laughs> the so, that's the name, mm -hmm. the Hanzia Dictionary of Modern Arabic, you know, Modern mm -hmm. Arabic, Modern Written Arabic. So, I would definitely say this is the best dictionary for me. Mm -hmm. And again, because it goes back to um, learning the Arabic language through root words, you know, root mm -hmm. words. And I think that, that's, that's, that's where the basic is, where when you know the root word, it tells you some something about the root word and then it derives, you know, it goes into derivations about you know uh as we said when there's a meme before it is a place mm -hmm. when there's this letter added to it there's this and when the when there's that letter added to it the form changes mm -hmm. and so on and so forth so i would say this is the best for me this is the best of the of the hands wet hands wet hands wet say hands via hands via hands via you are really like really re, re, like a german okay hands via hands via hands via yeah so this this is a uh, this is this is the 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 dictionary that I would advise a anyone to get. But again, it's not it's not for everyone. So a person might be scared to learn Arabic with the root words because mm -hmm. oh it's hard. But to be honest, it's, it's very easy. It's, yeah. it's very very easy. You know. So get get a, a good dictionary and um, learn your vocab. That's the mistake I did. You know. Make sure you pack up. Make make mm -hmm. sure you have thousands of words. Make no. sure if you can memorize the dictionary you know this this is not a very this is not a comp this is not um um, um a dictionary that that people will use for example I, I don't know what the word is i forgot the word but this is not a conventional yeah this is not a conventional mm -hmm. dictionary in conventional dictionaries you you see the word in arabic just in english or from english to arabic no. here is the word word so get get a simpler a, a dictionary that's a bit simple even if you want to memorize the whole dictionary mm -hmm. this means that that means that that means that you memorize those words or the, entirely you're very as long as your vocab is is tight and strong mm -hmm. you're never going to be out of words to use so no. that's the thing yeah, yeah it so was reported to me by a brother his name was saeed he was french he studied here in mauritania and uh he told me this like in 2013 yeah. And he told me about a, a woman in the village where he was studying who memorized the whole Lisanul Arab. Check this so out. So I was, since that day, subhanAllah, I just remember right now, since that day, I was like, oh my God, I want to go to Mauritania, man. I want to go Lisa, to Mauritania. Lisanul Arab is an encyclopedia. It's a, it's a whoa. That's if, crazy. If you remember, and Lisanul Arab is not, it's not even like a, it's that, that's, that's, 
the 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 dictionary of someone who's very high in Arabic. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. words that people don't even use nowadays. Yeah. Words that you're not going to find using nowadays. No, you get, you find them in Sahara. So that that's why it says that's 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 the actual name of the book, Lisan al Arabi, and the tongue of the Arabs, yeah, the yeah, language, yeah. the actual language of the Arabs. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so yeah, get a very get a good dictionary and uh, do your vocab. Just mm -hmm. pack as many words as you can. That's that would be my advice. Tayyib, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. So uh, we got to the end of uh, of this interview. We ran out of time. It's actually about to be iftar in like three minutes here. Three so, minutes. Oh, yeah. We still have three minutes here, bro. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> you still have how, how much? Thirty minutes. Yeah, 15, about 15, 20 minutes. Oh, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, yeah, thank you to everyone for tuning in and watching. And uh, and as you guys know, I have a, an online program to learn Arabic. You can check it out down below. The study case that I've named, uh, how, I went, how I Went Fluent in Arabic in 10 months with one single book in one hour per day. So you guys can check that out uh, in the description below. In the description below as well, you will find uh, the YouTube channel of the brother Nuruddin and, uh, you know, all the links basically where you can find him. So, Barakallah Fikum, Wa Sallallahu Ala Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam.